Hi, I'm Hazel. Today, we're going to be taking a look at exactly why you are going to be fired up to do some island expeditions in BFA. Whether or not they're fun is going to be personal opinion, but we all know that the real reason why you do something in WoW is the stuff that you're going to get potentially maybe at the end of it if you get lucky. Here in this video we're gonna go over all of the rewards from island expeditions because there is a ton of stuff. There are five mounts, two toys, and then 28 pets. You're gonna want to be doing them unless you really just hate fun stuff. So first up, let's take a look at the mounts that you can get from Island Expeditions. So the first one is the Craghorn Chasm Leaper, and this one is a little bit of an enigma as to whether or not this is the form it's going to go into the game as. It has the Minion of Grumpus model, although it has been recolored, but it also has the exact same description as the Minion of Grumpus mount, which is probably placeholder, but maybe the mount model is placeholder, maybe this is going to be something different, or maybe this is what the mount is going to look like. But in any case, if this is what we're going to get, it'll be great news for people that love ground mounts that don't fit through doors. Island Expedition mount number two is Chincho's Eternal Hound, and this is a recolor of the Missa Pandaria Collector's Edition mount, the Imperial Quillen. So this one does not look like it can fly. The Imperial Quillen has these like glowing orbs that sprout wings in its shoulders. There are no glowing orbs on this one, and when you load up the flying animation in Model Viewer, it certainly doesn't sprout any wings, so it's looking like this one is a groundbound one. But if you didn't get the Missa Pandaria Collector's Edition, or you just want this gorgeous coloring of it, this is so cool. The next one is the Twilight Avenger, and I will be very disappointed if this one doesn't fly. Twilight Drakes aren't exactly a new concept in WoW, but this is the first time we've had any new ones since Void Elves were added, and Void Elves would look stunning on these. I'm just saying. The next mount on the list is the Surf Jelly. This is, of course, an aquatic mount, which is a recolor of the mount that we got from Cosmos. And like most aquatic mounts, it's kind of useless because it's not as fast as the Underlight Angler Shark Transform thing. So there's really no reason to ever use them, which is a shame because they're very cool. That's one of the things on kind of like my eternal WoW wish list is to buff the swim speed on these things. You don't even have to give it water breathing, although that would also be nice, but like just make them go at least as fast so I can, you know, ride them. <laughs> the fifth final and clearly the best island expedition mount is Squawks, the parrot. I have been dying to ride the giant parrot mounts ever since I saw them in the BFA, was it the launch announcement? They had a big slide, I had a giant parrot mount, I needed it, as did many, many people, and here it is, his name is Squawks, he's a green parrot. If you zoom in, he's actually got a hook talon, which sounds like startlingly effective. This is the most pirate mount that has ever happened, and if you are doing any kind of pirate transmog, or theme, or you just play an outlaw rogue, you have, you have to have it, you have to. The next type of booty you can plunder from Island Expeditions, sounded better in the script, is battle pets, and there are 28 new battle pets to be had from Island Expeditions, there are 28 of them, and hilariously enough, there's actually an achievement where if you get all of them, you get an achievement called I was only here for the pets, which is accurate. Not all of them are new models, and there are a couple of recolors in here, but for the most part, there is some really good stuff. So up first is Captain Barnaby and Mr. Nibs, and these are skeletal pirate monkeys. This is the most Pirates of the Caribbean thing that I've ever seen in my life, except for Pirates of the Caribbean. They've got the hats, they've got boots, you know, that's very important for pirate-like weather, and then the rest of you are not really going to get any cold because they don't have any skin. And, and interestingly enough, the movesets for both of these pets don't include any undead moves. It's your pretty standard issue beast and humanoid type monkey moveset, so that's a thing. Next is the Bloodstone Tunneler. This is a fairly old model. We've had this one around since at least Northrend. There is nothing particularly remarkable here, although the moveset might come in handy. You know, you've got a burn combo. But I think the most entertaining thing about this one is the description, and I'm not even going to read it because it's less funny when you've already read it than you hear somebody say it, but I enjoyed that quite a bit. Moving right along, we have the Cold Light Surf Runner, and look at this Murloc! We've had Murlocs before, we've had a variety of types of Murlocs, we've had new Murloc models, we've had baby Murlocs, but we've never had this Murloc model before with the little dingly dingly bingle bongle, there's a better word for it, but I don't care, and uh, I love this model, this one's too cool. Next is the Craghoof Kid, this is a recolor of the Summit Kid pet, and of course the Ghastly Kid. So, you know, standard issue goat pet, it has an identical moveset to the Summit Kid, so nothing too special to see here. The Death Sting Scorpid is a cool looking Scorpid. It's got a pretty metal name. It's got nice colors to it. Nothing terribly special or new about the model. We've had this one for a while, but it does look pretty cool. We have False Knuckle Bumps, the Mechanical Gorilla, and I swear this name is a joke that's just going over my head. It feels like it means more than it is, and it probably does, and if you know, can you tell me in the comments, because I'm feeling out of the loop here. But anyways, this is a Mechanical Gorilla, and the Mechanical-ness 
has really been updated onto this model. I don't know if we've seen one quite like this before. Once again, we're not seeing any specialized types of moves. It's just beast and humanoid stuff. There are no mechanical moves, but he is mechanical type and therefore benefits from that still slightly overpowered racial. Keeping to the Pandaria theme, which many of these pets are, we have the Giggling Flame, the Laughing Stoneskin, the Mischievous Zephyr, and the Playful Frostkin. So these look a lot like many of the pets that we got in the Timeless style, but now we have them in slightly new colors. The Juvenile Brine Shell is one of those pinchy snapper dudes. This is basically a Mr. Pinchy for people that cannot be bothered to get Mr. Pinchy, and I wouldn't blame you, it's a lot of fishing. He has Wish, he has Renewing Mist, he will presumably have a big health pool, but you know, it's just Mr. Pinchy in blue. We can call him Mr. I mean, we can call him the Juvenile Brine Shell, but that's no fun. The Kinderweb Spiderling is for those that got really excited about the flame spiders and cataclysm and then just never got over it. We've had a lot of these things, and here's one more. The Kunchong Hatchling is a recolor of Kovok, and if you never got a Kovok, then you probably won't need to because this is another instance of a pet being added with the exact same moveset as a previous harder to get pet. This is not the first time they've done this. I'm all in favor of it because these pets are often just useful and being able to get one without having to go back into an old raid or spend a lot of money in the auction house is always a good thing. Little Hoof is a deer using the new fawn model that they added in Legion. He's adorable, I like deer, I don't see a problem with this. His favorite things are bounding, bouncing, frolicking, and headbutts in that order. And his moveset is really nothing new, but he is really cute, so I don't care. The Sandshell Chitterer is another one of these bug dudes, and I don't know who keeps asking for these bug dudes, but they keep giving them to us. So somebody must want them, and I hope that that person is very happy. Snapper, it's a little turtle, and he's got a little beak on him, and uh, his description text is all like, watch out, he loves to bite, as though that's not gonna take a finger off. I like my fingers, you know, he's cute, but I like my fingers. I need them to play well. Snort and the Muskplank Calfling are both yak type pets. They don't have an exactly identical model, but they do both have an exactly identical moveset to Zhao Calfling of New Zhao. So if you never got that one, you never did the Celestial Tournament and you really want that tanky yak thing with like the, the heel, the big wish, here you go. The Sparkle Shell Sand Crawler is hard to say when you're trying to say it. It is a crab. These did get cuter in BFA. That's not just your eyes. This one is purple. And that's kind of all that's notable about it. The Sunscale Hatchling is a Wind Serpent with a brand new model, and that brand new model has been applied retroactively to the Venom Fang Hatchling that you got from the damp pet supplies in the Whale and Caverns, depending on whether or not you actually went and did that. The moves are pretty standard, but he's a cool little dude. I like these guys a lot better with feathers. It makes more sense that they can fly. The Thistlebrush Bud is another Mr. Pandaria throwback, and this one has identical moves to the Ashley Sprightling, which does come in kind of handy from time to time and is not always easy or cheap to get. So it does seem like they're really filling that need with a lot of these Island Expedition pets. This is the Tinder Pup. It shares an identical moveset with the Blazehound from Firelands, and I forgot to talk about the Tinder Pup while still on camera. I'm sorry, Tinder Pup. It's not you. It's me. The Vorakar Leecher is kind of gross. It says that they've escaped from the Lich King's grasp, but in my opinion, he probably could have kept them, and nobody really would have minded. So I saved my favorites for the end of this list, starting with this next couple. So we have Inky and the Octopode Fry, and they're little you know, they're baby octopus, and you know, I, I I need them. There's the tentacles, those are very important to the void. They're kind of like void adjacent. Inky's got himself an eye patch, and the octopode fry just looks like he belongs on like a children's cartoon, and I, I want, I, I, I give, give it. Second to last here, we have Poro the parrot, and Poro's description says that Poro cannot fly, and based on the fact that he's really very much on the ground in this preview, it's quite likely that when following you around, Poro the parrot will not fly, and he's a brand new parrot model, and I've always had a soft spot for parrots in this game, and it's been so long, like those were one of the OG battle pets that you could get back, like way, way back when, and I don't care if he can't fly, you know, he can sit on my shoulder, he probably can't sit on my shoulder, can he sit on my shoulder? Please? Aside from being super cool, Poro is also a source of the Call of Darkness Nocturnal Strike combo, so if you wanted more pets that were capable of that, here you go. Finally, Island Expedition pet number 28, the very last and final one, is Scuttle, the pirate crab featuring hat, and the bottle of rum, and I want to talk about that bottle of uh, presumably rum, and you never know, it could be explosives, I don't trust this guy. But like, how does that even work? Does he dig it up beside him? Does it just follow him around? Is it only for decoration on the pet preview page? Like, what's the deal with that? I need one so I can find out. The last two pieces of loot that you can get from Island Expeditions are toys. I'm surprised that there are five mounts, 28 pets, and only two toys. It's very possible that they add more to this list. I don't have any footage showing you exactly what these will look like when you use them because I haven't been able to get them yet, but I think we can use our imaginations fairly accurately. So the first one is the Umgut Ritual Drum, which makes you look like an Umgut Pygmy. I would like to think that Umgut 
pygmies are just like perpetually out of mana. And then the other one is the whisker wax candle, which puts a candle on your head. And that's just dangerous, but I suppose a lot of things are. If you're a member of some kind of secret exclusive kobold role-playing guild, this is going to be like the thing to get in BFA. So that is what you're going to be looking for from Island Expeditions. There is a lot of stuff to get, and I think it's safe to say that this is expected to take some time. It's probably not expected that you're going to go in real hot in the beginning and just like marathon it all out in a week or two. Although with a look at some of those pets, I'm sure that some of us are definitely going to try. One thing that I don't know yet is exactly how you get these things from Island Expeditions. So far, I have not seen any kind of a reward chest or box that you get from completing them, but I think that that's a fairly safe bet of the source. They don't seem to be specifically tied to any of the Island Expeditions expedition achievements. Although while we're on the topic of those, there is an island expedition meta achievement that rewards the title expedition leader. So I suppose that is one more collectible to get. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you think and have a wonderful, wonderful day. Bye.